Hey, it's Robert Fithin, and today I want to talk about the most valuable albums that I have according to Discogs.com. Now, first of all, I don't want to do this because I'm trying to brag about all the wonderfully valuable albums I have. I don't really have that many. Uh, but everybody in the vinyl community seems to be making these videos, and a lot of people like them, so I thought, why not? I will make one, too! Uh, plus which, when people find out that I've been a, you know, I collect records or whatever, all throughout the years I've been doing this, one of the first things they say is, what's the most, you know, what's the most expensive record you own or whatever. So, uh, here it is, the 10 most expensive or most valuable records that I own according to Discogs.com. Uh, first of all, Discogs.com, I'm sure you already know this, you could skip over this part, but it's basically the website where you can go on there and put specific pressings of records, uh, cassettes, even eight tracks, you know, CDs, specific pressing so you know exactly what you have and you can uh, kind of uh, catalog your entire uh, collection or inventory if you have a store or whatever it is, because it is also a place where you can buy and sell records, tapes, CDs, uh, specific pressings. That's the beauty of it, the exact one you want. So what they have here is when you put your collection in there, which I've done, uh, you can either uh, sort it by the uh, lowest that someone has ever paid for that particular pressing of that album by the highest someone's ever paid, again, this is on Discogs, uh, or they have a median price. I decided to uh, sort these by median price, just because that's kind of a happy middle ground there. Uh, when something is, is way high priced, that could mean that particular pressing was autographed or something special like that, and that's why the price is so high. Same thing for the really low price stuff. If something is, you know, lower price, well, maybe they sold it for that price because it didn't have the cover with it or it didn't have the record. It was only the cover or you know, it was all torn up or scratched up or whatever. So I went ahead and went with the uh, middle ground. So let's start off here. I got my list here at number 10, Tool Undertow. This is the gray vinyl pressing that was a promotional item that I got back when I worked in uh, college radio. And uh, I, I talked a little bit about this on the 50 Album Challenge video I did because I hadn't heard this in so long. Uh, it really doesn't sound that good. You know, you're trying to put all this music onto one record. They actually leave off the uh, Disgustipated track from this, so that's not even on here. But the rest of the album is, it sounds okay, but it doesn't sound like up to, uh, like, you know, what the standards of like an audiophile or somebody who really cares about sound quality with records would go for. But it is collectible. Um, did get this in college and uh, glad I held on to this because I've been collecting records since way back in the 90s when hardly anyone was doing it. So pick this up you're right out of the free, you know, whatever, gimme thing and held on to it. Glad I did. Number nine, the almost famous soundtrack on uh, double uh, album here. No gatefold though, they just both slip in with basic uh, white sleeves. Uh, this is on the DreamWorks record and uh, label, and this is, uh, it's kind of interesting because this is a soundtrack from the movie Almost Famous, which features mostly older songs that, you know, you heard probably on record. Simple Man from Leonard Skinner, That's the Way from Led Zeppelin, Tiny Dancer from Elton John, uh, The Who Sparks, uh, uh, Feel Flows from the Beach Boys, America from Simon and Garfunkel, uh, Waiting for the Man, David Bowie, it goes on and on and on. And a couple of new tracks thrown in there as well. Uh, this, I don't think, has ever been uh, reissued. And that's one of the reasons why it's uh, uh, so much here. And the uh, median price, $146 is what people are saying the median price is, of this is on Discogs. That's what somebody's paid for this. I forgot to mention the tool was 132 median. Moving on to number eight. School's Out from Alice Cooper. I don't know about this one. This is not a... Uh, this is not a $160 album. That's the median price. It's not a $180 album either. That was the most it's ever paid for this. Uh, this is a $10 album, $8 album, $12, whatever condition it's in. Mine does not have the panties. <laughs> so that's the thing. But I'm sure the, uh, what was it, the $180 uh, copy of this was probably autographed or something like that. And that's why it was so rich. So uh, this one doesn't really fit in with the rest. It's not a super collectible item. And it's just an anomaly that it's uh, that priced on Discogs. Like I said, probably autographed or something like that is why it had that price. So we move on to uh, number seven. The self-titled album from Alice in Chains is number seven. And this is another promotional item from the mid-90s. And uh, it is the Gatefold uh, promotional copy. It does have a little thing out of it there. Double uh, album here. And sounds actually pretty good for an album that, uh, or a record that was made in 1995. I've played this thing like maybe twice, and it is uh, brilliant. Uh, 
the same kind of artwork, of course, as the as you would expect in a CD, but really put together well. And uh, I really like this a lot. It's got a nice textured, uh, kind of a matte finish on the uh, album cover here. But yeah, Alice in Chains, Alice in Chains. I don't know if um, this has been officially re-released. I know there's kind of bogus, uh, kind of dubious release of this, which is not a gatefold um for whatever reason uh but yeah this is super hard to find two hundred dollars the median price on uh, discogs for this 350 is the max and the lowest is uh, 180 so it's right around the same kind of uh area they're pretty uh, rare stuff and as soon as columbia gets smart enough to reissue this those prices will go down number six the return of durati uh column and this is super hard to find on discogs uh 215 median 398 for the most now there are different versions of this but this is just the prices for this particular one this would be worth a lot more if it was the uh pressing that had the hand stamp on it where they actually took a thing and did the stencil work on it themselves the band did uh but this is not that one so it's not worth quite as much it is the one that's 215 and 398 and the record is pretty much basic but what really gets it is uh the sandpaper <laughs> album cover here both sides it's meant to totally scratch up all the record albums that are next to it so obviously you thwart that by keeping it in a nice uh, plastic uh cover here but uh Durati column uh yeah there you go the return of coming in at number uh six that means we're halfway there Number five, Temple of the Dog, another one that we're just really waiting around for a record label to get smart enough to uh, reissue an actual uh, reissue of this. I don't think that's happened yet. A couple of bootlegs out there. Doesn't sound that well, though. Another case of, uh, doesn't sound like good, another case of a uh, lot of music on one disc, and it's, it's too much. It's really thin. Uh, not a lot of uh, great sound here, but it is quite collectible. Uh, at number five, it comes in at $225 medium price and $495. Mine somebody has taken and written V281 on it, so uh, mine is not worth that much. But uh, yeah, you get the uh, generic record uh, label uh, and then a nice uh, lyric sheet. Basically the same thing as you get with the CD, but larger because it's an album. Temple of the Dog. This is, of course, the uh, Soundgarden uh, slash Pearl Jam uh, kind of tribute album that came out in 1991. Great album. Uh, I prefer to listen to this on a CD or stream. Though. Like I said, the record is not that great, but it is beautiful and uh, obviously very collectible. Number four, Nirvana, Nevermind. Can't like... Oh, I could, but that just takes too much time. It's actually up there on the wall in a frame. Another one that I got in college, same deal as Temple of the Dog. It was in the record library. No one ever played it because it's a record. You know, what's that? And uh, so it just kind of um, kind of sat there. So I, uh, at the end of the year, I took that one and Temple of the Dog. Other students took, you know, a couple of the others. And we all just went on our merry way. But um, yeah, Nirvana, I'm glad I picked that one. That one has a median price of $335 and $560. Somebody actually paid for that. Again, the $560 one. Could possibly be uh, autographed or something like that. I remember all of these promotional items in college, like the Temple of the Dog, the Nirvana, the uh, what was the earlier one, the uh, um, uh, the Tool, and um, remember people just treated them like jokes. Like they, I remember one guy in college was like, "Well, is it even the like real music on there?" And, oh no, probably they just took like a label uh, for that and just stuck it on any record. I don't think it's like actually, you know, Tool. No, it really is. It's a real record you can play on a real turntable. Thank you very much. But yeah, that was kind of the attitude. People just treated them as novelty items. So um, me and my friends, a couple of friends, we were, we were really into records. So we would go to all the record stores and look at that time in the 90s for like the classic rock, the obscure, you know, stuff or whatever. We found a couple of those. We didn't ever think these 90s Tool and, and, and uh, you know, Temple of Dog would ever be worth anything. They were just free. And it's funny because now those are the ones... That are so coveted. So we move on to uh, number three, which is Tool, but a little bit later Tool. I actually got this at a commercial radio station I worked for in the 90s. It's sort of sealed, but not really. You could lift this off and <laughs> play the record, which I've done a couple of times. Uh, uh, Anima or Anima from Tool, however you want to say it. Double album. Uh, this is how the Tool albums that go you know, on and on for 65 minutes, they should definitely be on double albums. This sounds great. 
very, very hard to find. That's why it's the third most valuable album I have, coming in at $345 medium price, $618 maximum price. Uh, this one is, you know, not exactly sealed anymore, but um, uh, yeah, it's not going to get no $700. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about some of these discog prices and who, who paid for these or what, but um, here it is. Great album from Tool. Um, if you've heard it, you know that, but uh yeah the the, the record uh, definitely something to have and this has been reissued a few times so it's not i don't know why it's so super rare or uh, been released a couple of times but um i thought maybe not but uh tool is definitely a vinyl uh friendly you know you'd think that people are into records would like tool so they need to get on the ball and start putting some of these out and that picture disc they have for the other one that needs to be like a like a good they need to do two good uh two record set of that as well so we move on to number two and number one. This is where we leave the LPs. Now, I don't do a lot with 45s usually. They're kind of an afterthought. But when I was in college, which seems to be a trend with the more valuable records, the one I, ones I got in college, I used to go to this store called uh, The Missing Link in St. Louis. It's not there anymore, but a great store that specialized in punk rock and heavy metal. And I went ahead uh, for twice in my life and took a chance and bought really expensive collectible 45s and thankfully they've become even more collectible and so number two and number one are not albums they are 45s and they are both by the misfits number two is called halloween and you can see the price tag is still on there i paid 60 dollars for this it is now worth 390 median and 600 dollars maximum and this definitely is the uh, original it's not the bootlegs that are out there this is the actual uh Real deal, uh, I maybe have played this once or twice. I never wanted to play it a lot because I knew it was worth something and I you know, got, the, got the, uh, the music on CD. There the actual record is. And I will, the 245s here from the Misfits, I will definitely be uh, probably parting ways with pretty soon here. I really don't have a reason to uh, keep such a collectible thing here. And uh, I'll, I'll be uh, looking for somebody who wants to pay some top dollar. I'll be looking for somebody who wants to pay some, uh, you know, $900 <laughs> for this Misfits uh, Halloween. And you already know number one is the Misfits. And it is three hits from hell. Uh, $482 median, $650 maximum. And uh, it's three hits from hell. It's London Dungeon, Ghoul's Night Out, and uh, Horror Hotel. And... Uh, there it is. Mine has the thing on it still. A little uh, Fiend Club thing that you can fill out. And it is the uh, kind of, I don't know, beige colored label. Because uh, there's different labels with these. There's a purple and, and they're all different prices. But that's, again, that's the great thing about Discogs is it's, it's going by the actual pressing, not just the, you know, whatever. You know, there's 25 different versions of something. So it is the actual pressing and uh, you get a good idea of what your stuff is worth going there. So those are my uh, top 10 most valuable albums according to Discogs.com. What did you think of the video? Uh, do you think some of these are worth that much? Would you would you pay uh, some of these medium prices for any of these albums? I'm, I'm certain the Alice Cooper school's out. Like I said, that's a strange one. I don't get that one. That must have been some kind of autograph thing. But the rest of these... Um, I think people, some people are paying some outrageous prices for these albums. So that'd be interesting... Uh, to see, uh, and of course, your most valuable albums. I've seen a lot of videos in the vinyl community. They're all interesting. I love seeing people just reflect on the records they have, whether they're worth something uh, according to a website or not. I mean, my most personally prized possession albums, uh, maybe a couple of these, but really they're ones that are just kind of per personal to me that are kind of irreplaceable because I, you know, I, like my Meet the Beatles, which is from, you know, a 1978 pressing on the Purple Capital label. It's really not worth that much. But it's worth a lot to me because it was one of the first records I ever have, and I still have that copy. My Magical Mystery Tour is the same way. Uh, a lot of my Kiss records are like that, including Dynasty, which I bought new as a seven-year-old. I love that album. It's worth, you know, probably 20 bucks or whatever, but it's worth the world to me. So, I mean, that's really what I gauge value on. So, But those are my 10 most valuable uh, records according to uh, Discogs. Oh, and then, you know, that one too. <laughs>